Well, everyone, welcome to the 2021 snowmobile season here in Maine. And it's off to a slow start. So far, it's almost the second week of January, and we have had one snowstorm. Uh, when we got between 6 and 10 inches, depending on where you are. And it's stuck around for at least a little while so far. The temperatures haven't been warm enough to melt it all off. But uh, as far as the trails go, many of them haven't even been traveled yet because there is no base. Uh, almost none of them have been groomed, uh, except for one. And that is uh, at least one near me, and that's the rail trail from Newport to Dover. Uh, I've heard reports that it uh, has been groomed, so I'm kind of desperate to get out there, and I want to see what that trail's like. I don't expect the conditions to be real good, but... I gotta get out there. Gotta use this thing. It's been in the garage for way too long. And I thought I'd start off this video with a bit of a demonstration of how these ramps work. In case anyone out there was wondering exactly how the setup is and how it compares to a trailer, they do have a few downsides to them. One is, as you can see, the track of my snowmobile extends past the tailgate of my truck and since the ramps need to sit on top of the tailgate, I do need to space up the tracks on the snowmobile and that means uh, the best way I've found to do it is to put a 2x4 underneath them which means i got to lift the back of that snowmobile every time I want to offload it. And it's heavy, it's kind of a chore, but um, you know, in a lot of ways these ramps kind of beat a trailer as in I don't have to store a trailer over the summer I don't have to register a trailer. They are cheaper than a trailer. And so, there are some upsides as well. It just kind of depends. Uh, I do get a little nervous loading and unloading it at this point. Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I assume at some point something's going to happen. It's going to slip off the, the rails and it's going to fall on the ground or tip over or, or something. I just, I know at some point something's going to happen. But um, so far I've had pretty good luck with it, so... I'm going to keep using them for now. And, um, yeah, so once you basically, once you get the lip of the ramps on the back of the tailgate, then it's just got these three straps. Uh, it has three sections that fold together. So each section has its own strap. And the middle section is a ratchet strap, so you can really cinch it right up and get it nice and tight. And the other two are uh, pull straps for the skis. These ramps are also pretty good because they do have that back section that you might be able to see. I'm stepping over through it right now. And that is a tr basically a traction section so that you're not relying just on the ground itself to give you enough traction to get up the ramp. You actually have a set of metal uh, rungs that will your track can dig into. And there's Andrew pulling up right now. Uh, he invited me on this trip. It was his idea and uh, sounded like a pretty good idea to me. So I'm going to meet up with him. And um, he's got his rig. He does have a trailer, which, yeah, it has advantages. It's a little easier to get on and off. Um, but like I said, you know, I don't have to store a trailer all year, so that's beneficial to me. I've toyed with a couple of different ways of offloading this. One is riding it off. Uh, oftentimes, it'll the track will get stuck when I ride it off, and I have to get off and lift up the track um, off the bottom when it gets to that uh, bottom section. But this time, it, it comes off pretty easy. And again, it's kind of hard to get everything lined up right, but if you do, it goes on and off pretty easy. And now... Time to get geared up.
here we are. We are officially on the rail trail and on our way. Gonna see how far it goes, how far we can get. Again, not really expecting spectacular conditions, but we're hoping it's passable. We expect some bare spots and some rocks sticking up, but um, hopefully nothing that's too big of a deal. And right now, it's actually better than I honestly expected, even just from the beginning here. Uh, it seems pretty smooth, and uh, my travels on the rail trail during the summer have been uh, pretty rough. It's pretty potholed, and it's a little bumpy, but um, I didn't think there was going to be enough snow to really fill in all the dips, and it, it wasn't entirely. There were plenty of potholes and little dips and things, but it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now you may notice that my snowmobile has mirrors this year. It did not come with mirrors, and so I didn't have any last year. And it, I don't not I do not like riding without mirrors. Uh, you can't see what's behind you if you're riding in a group. You can't see if people are still behind you or if someone wants to pass you or anything like that. It's it's awful riding without mirrors. I think so. I wanted to get a good set, and these are some mirrors that I found. They're really popular for adventure motorcycling, and that's what they're designed for but uh, they're perfectly adaptable to a snowmobile as well. And basically it uses uh, ram mounts. Uh, I've had really good luck with ram mounts for cameras and also for cell phones. They make really good systems and I like their design and they work really, really well. So I picked up these mirrors, they're not cheap. It's about $130 for the original set, which comes with the mirrors, an arm, and a mount. But the, the mount that comes with them actually wouldn't work with my snowmobile. And then after I put those on, I didn't quite like it, so I wanted to get extensions. So I put on these secondary extensions with adapters, and all in all, I've got about $200 in the, the mirrors. Come back here sometime when the ice is thicker. Yep. They'll take trees and make a trail that goes right across the lake, pick up another trail over there. Oh, cool. And you just follow the pine trees. Yep.
That section right there was definitely the worst of it. That would not be fun to hit at speed. Uh, luckily, we were able to slow down and kind of coast over it, but I would not want to hit that going fast, that's for sure. And just in general, we kept our speeds pretty low on this trip, just not knowing what the conditions were going to be like. That ended up being the worst spot, and I don't think there were any other spots that would necessarily kill you if you hit fast, but they might not have been that much fun. So it was good to keep the speed low, and I really don't mind that anyway. I'm just not a fast rider, and it doesn't really matter what I'm riding. I'm not fast on the snowmobile, I'm not fast on the motorcycle, I'm not fast in a truck or car. I just, I drive a comfortable speed. That's what's most fun for me. And uh, there's some reasoning behind that, you know. I've come across uh, big ruts in the road on my motorcycle going 35 miles an hour and have been you know, basically unable to stop and have hit them going about 25 miles an hour and they were big ruts and it hurt a lot and similarly I've been on some of these back roads in my pickup truck again going like 35 miles an hour and all of a sudden you come over a rise and on the other side there'll be a complete washout and you have to swerve or hit the brakes really hard to stop or to get around it and there are times when I've been lucky uh, I feel that I haven't gone off the road or damaged my vehicle or flipped it or something uh, just because you just you never know what's going to come around the corner. You really need to be paying attention and it really pays to kind of take your time if you haven't driven a road a lot or even if you haven't ridden it recently. A washout's going to happen just about any time there's hard green. So it really pays to, in my opinion, to kind of keep the speeds at a reasonable level and just be prepared for what's coming around the corner.
So after making it to Dover just fine, we decided to stop by the Bear's Den. Unfortunately, they were closed when we got there. They have shorter hours now, and actually it's just a restaurant that is open. Now the tavern part is currently closed. Yeah, that's too bad. I don't know because of COVID. I don't know about different hours. I don't know why. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah, well, I can come on in. So instead of a delicious and refreshing beverage at the Bear's Den, we settled for a much smaller snack at the gas station before headed home. So I anticipated it would get a little chillier once the sun went down and we were going to be riding back in the dark. So I swapped out some of my gear, I put on my heavier Gore-Tex gloves, and I put my neck warmer on, and yeah, that ended up being way too much. I sweated to death the entire way home. So definitely no issue staying warm with the gear that I have. And it's not that I have anything real crazy for gear. These are a Carhartt jacket and overalls that I bought last year just for snowmobiling and they weren't that expensive. So I don't think you need to go all out to stay warm. I have never had an issue being cold on any of my trips. And not that I'm doing anything real crazy, certainly nothing below zero, but these are you know sub-freezing temperatures and I've never had an issue staying warm. I just had to stop and snap a picture of that sunset 
Had some pretty good views on the way home. It was a pretty nice ride.
And with that, we are back at the truck, we are loaded up, and we are ready to start headed home. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.